dollar. So that's a quick snapshot of your global market space. But let's uh, now turn to uh, Martin uh, Ackerman, and he joins me from Cape Town. He's an advisory partner and investment strategist, this at Citadel. Martin, thank you for making the time to join us. It seems as if every other second day or so, China is coming with a different surprise. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the impact of that injection of uh, about uh, of injection of yuan that we saw into the market today and how that's spilling over into global markets. Yeah, I, I think you're right that China is at the moment a big surprise out there. Um, China's got a, a major impact on, on the whole world at this point in time, but more specifically emerging markets. I think what we're seeing currently is that the Chinese uh, underlying activity and Chinese growth numbers are probably going to be significantly weaker than most people expected and definitely also what the government is targeting. However, the government is very proactive in trying to stimulate the economy and preventing it from, from a hard landing. We definitely are not on the page that we, we're likely to see a hard landing. It, it's probably going to be a, a soft uh, cool down of that economy given the, the stimulus that the government is putting in place. Now, some of that stimulus is like you've mentioned, the, the interest rate cut we've seen earlier this week and also during the course of last week, the fact that they devalued their currency uh, simply to be more competitive in this global world of declining currencies on the back of a stronger dollar and also to stimulate the, the export growth. So they're definitely proactive in trying to, to uh, provide a bit of a floor for the Chinese economy as they slow. How that impacts South Africa, other emerging markets and also global financial markets. I think at this point in time, if you look at the, the first three days of this week, it, we're definitely in an emerging market storm. The markets are getting used to the fact that China is not going to grow at 7%. And that's definitely spilling over into most emerging market assets. And we've seen a sell-off in, in all emerging market assets, equities, bonds and currencies. Um, and also for emerging markets that uh, benefited a lot from the super cycle on commodities that exported a lot to and still exporting to, to China. Mm. Martin, the fact that there is uh, currently lower demand is, is weighing on those emerging markets like South Africa. Absolutely. And Martin, the Fed uh, today coming out almost battling for some of that limelight speculation uh, that uh, a September rate hike is off the table. What kind of implications does this mean for investors in the South African context? Yes, I think at the moment, you know, most of the things that we experience here, we think it's, uh, be, uh, you know, what's happening in the local economy. If you think about the very bad economic data that's been released uh, yesterday. But in fact, uh, most of the things that's driving our financial markets right now is more global issues. And three of the biggest is probably what the Fed is going to do, call it over, over the next couple of months in terms of the interest rate hike. Uh, add to that the uh, Chinese story that we just spoke about and the pressure on commodity prices. So why is important what's going to happen in the U.S. is that, yes, the U.S. is still the biggest economy, but the U.S. interest rate is, if you like, the cost of capital for the global economy. So it is very important in terms of when we're going to see that first interest rate hike. And as a result of the market already expecting that to happen, we've seen a lot of capital flowing back to the U.S., more demand for dollars and that's why the dollar has been winning over the past couple of months and and it's been stronger relative to most other emerging markets and and in fact the euro and the sterling so what that means for the world is probably a little bit of a continuation of this currency war where the dollar in the medium term will be the winner and most other countries will, will battle against that uh, and we know the story on south african side that means a a rant that remain under pressure for now but we do think as this emerging market storm passes, uh, there might be some relief for, for the rant at least against the dollar. As a final question, uh, I mean, it certainly sounds like emerging markets are between a rock and a hard place uh, with the slowing growth in China and, of course, uh, an imminent rate hike coming out uh, of the U.S. As an, over, uh, as an overview, Martin, what would you say the outlook over the next six months is, looks like for emerging markets and which remain most attractive? I think that most emerging markets are unfortunately facing some structural headwinds. Uh, we need some serious reforms in many of these markets. Probably uh, India and Mexico is the two that you can uh, put aside. They've been busy with reforms, they're already benefiting from that. But for the rest, you know, there's probably more hard work ahead. Uh, the environment at this point in time is probably more headwinds and tailwinds. So it will take a bit of time for emerging markets to, to actually put in place these reforms.
reforms. It might be a little bit more pain before they realize that it's necessary. But in the meantime, I do think the storm will pass. I do think that when there's more certainty around the U.S. interest rate hike, uh, that we're likely to see some relief for some of these emerging uh, uh, currencies. Uh, in terms of the commodity exports to China, if China can experience a soft landing, get to more sustainable growth, and the world can get used to that kind of number, that will also be positive for emerging markets. So it is definitely uh, a little bit more pain before we're likely to see some relief uh, over the next couple of months. A little bit more pain, but where does the smart money go in the interim? How do you make sure that you're still making the right investment choices right now? Well, I think we, we tend to look longer term. The, 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 you shouldn't react emotionally right now in terms of all the volatility that's in markets. So still, for a longer term investor, if you look at where you're more likely to make money, uh, yes, there will be volatility and we're probably heading for more volatility over the next uh, couple of, of months and probably the next year. But in terms of where there's the best potential, it's still global companies. Most global companies are in a healthy position. Uh, they've paid back a lot of debt, they pay good dividends. And it feels like the world is coming to an end. But if you look at the growth numbers out of the US, you know, we're still going to have very good growth in the States. Europe is picking up. Uh, and China is slowing, but even if they settle at 4% growth, you know, that's a very handsome growth number. And as, as soon as the world and financial markets get used to that, that is an environment where these companies can still uh, maintain prof profitability and, and, and uh, support uh, equity prices at these levels. We rather prefer an allocation to those kind of companies instead of putting your money in cash or even government bonds in the West, where currently you're definitely not getting getting any reward, probably more risk than reward in, in all those investments. Martin, thank you so much for making the time to join us. Martin Ackerman, advisory partner and investment strategist at Citadel, giving us some insight as to where the smart money goes in uh, choppy territory as we've been seeing over the last couple of days. Now